This is an HP News Network special report. Okay, YouTubers and anti-nuke activists, this is Patrick Penry, and this is day one of the Dog and Pony Show with TEPCO as they attempt to convince us that they're pulling fuel rods from the Unit 4 spent fuel pool. And why do I say that? Because there's these FOIA documents, Freedom of Information Act documents, that paint a completely different picture of a catastrophic damage to Unit 4, walls blown out, cracks in the pool, inventory, water inventory lost, a Zerk fire, melt on the floor. These are from the Freedom of Information Act documents pertaining to Fukushima, and it paints a completely different picture. In fact, that's why many of us are scratching our heads and say, well, what are you talking about? You're unloading from spent fuel pool number four. That's impossible. I mean, if you are, it would just be a few of the fresh assemblies that had never been used before. But the non-checkerboarded fuel that was packed tightly, okay, and they didn't space the hot ones out with cool ones in between, it lost all the water, they got extremely hot, they burst into fire, they have a zirconium cladding fire, and there was a major uh, catastrophe to the spent fuel at Unit 4. In fact, they discussed pouring sand in a lead slurry. It was that bad. There was actually a discussion, where did this information come from? Directly from TEPCO. John Moniger and others were embedded directly with TEPCO as events, uh, not as they happened, but not very long afterwards, they had a team on the ground there, and TEPCO was giving them this and asking them, hey, should we pour sand in here with lead? What do you guys think? Okay, that's what they were asking the NRC. Help us out. Should we pour a sand and lead slurry into the spent fuel pool number four? And even number three, they're asking that about. Okay, so understand that what this massive group of mainstream media outlets and mainstream alternative outlets that I've been clear for a long time is under establishment control, they are perpetuating a hoax. What is the hoax? That the worst of the worst did not happen in Unit 4, and they're gonna, it's going to be dangerous, but they're going to try to get the fuel out. Okay, because the option is being honest with the American public and the world and Japan and Tokyo that what really did happen in Unit 4. And in these documents, again, don't take it from me, they're free and available to the public, and you should look through them because I tell you, in just an hour or two of searching through the FOIA documents, you can put together your own article on Unit 4 easily. Easily. And a little bit more than that on Unit 3. It's a little less information on Unit 3, but you still really could. I mean, so don't wait on me to write on Unit 3 that it lost water inventory, too. I have evidence on that as well. You do it. You do it. Help us out. Help us out. We need a lot of help. Okay, so the hoax is to convince you they're going to do this, but how are they going to pull this off? They're going to show you generic footage. They're never going to walk a film crew, even though they say the radiation levels have you know, dropped and it's not that bad. They're never going to walk a film crew down Unit 1, 2, and 3, showing us a newspaper with current events and a date on it, proving the date, and then walk up the platform into Unit 4 and show us the condition of the spent fuel pool, show us the operation. They could have already done this. They could have. This is 980-something days now uh, post-Fukushima. And we have still yet to see any definitive footage that shows beyond any reasonable doubt that the the depicted footage or picture is from Unit 4. It could be down from south of the, the Diani nuclear facility, or it could be from Unit 1 or Unit 2. So keep that in mind. They have yet, and this is in and of itself very suspicious. They've been unable to provide any consistent footage proving the condition of the fuel in Unit 4 as they claim it to be. So today there's a BBC article, a bunch of articles coming out. The first day was successful. They got some uh, fuel out. And TEPCO, thanks to Maureen, I have a, a link I'll give you to TEPCO has a report out, and they have some pictures you can look at. I want you to examine these pictures. And again, note, there's nothing to identify definitively that the pictures, when these pictures were taken, that I can find, or that they were from Unit 4 spent fuel pool. And I, like I say, it's, it seems to be a common thread throughout all of this footage and pictures that I've been seeing that at no time can you look at a picture and say, yeah, this is definitely Unit 4. No doubt about it, hands down, and there's the fuel down there. And people are standing around casually in some of these videos that I'm seeing. Why can they not walk down there with the camera? Why can they not show us a clear, uh, visible, 
uh, information that we need to see to confirm this and they've been unable to do that and again it just bolsters my case in the case of the FOIA documents that indicate in these conversations and emails the NRC and TEPCO were aware early on how bad Unit 4 was. There's a crack. I mean they even talk about the junk shot trying to get something to you know two compounds you mix to fill the crack so they can add water to it. I mean it, it was very serious and they knew it early on. Now naturally like any cover-up initially some information does come forth and that was Jaxco and Castro who were open right in the very beginning and said yeah it's lost inventory you know they discussed should we put a sand and lead slurry we're gonna try and refill it we're gonna put a sand and lead slurry in it that's how bad it was later when TEPCO and the Japanese government had a fit over it that's when these stories were recanted and this massive hoax this propaganda campaign went underway it's very revealing to folks because when this is all said and done and they've just showed generic footage the whole time, I mean, for me, it's a pretty much clear case. I mean, if I have to take this to the court of public opinion, I'm making my case and it it's, looks good for me. It looks very good for me and very bad for them. So until such time as they can prove their case and they're still using generic pictures and generic footage that could be from a nuclear plant anywhere in Japan, right, we have to be skeptical. We have to be suspicious and we have to to hold them a suspect. We know TEPCO now are known liars, folks. They're known liars, and so has the NRC and all these agencies and all these media outlets. Come on. You guys got to understand this is a big hoax. What did Morpheus say? Uh, that the Matrix um, is a world that, that pulled over your eyes to blind you from the real world, right? It's the illusion pulled over your eyes to blind you from the real world. I'm butchering his quote. I'll include it in this video. I apologize for that. But that's a perfect quote to end this video on. So I'll link to the uh, TEPCO report. You can look at that. You can examine the TEPCO pictures today. Again, generic pictures. Good luck finding anything to prove beyond any doubt to me that that is Unit 4. And again, I say they couldn't say anything else. Would you expect them to be honest and say, hey, Tokyo, you got 48 hours. You guys need to ride out. You know, right? Hey, I'm just keeping it real. All right. Patrick Penry, appreciate you joining me for this short video. Day one of Dog and Pony Show. I will report back as this as further news develops, okay? Thank you. Patrick Penry over and out. This has been an HP News Network special report.